Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid. We're hopping back into Lord of the Flies, uh, which is our multiplayer game with Lemuria. And we're hopping in on turn 41, which means we're very close to where I am real time in the game. We're, I'm in turn 43, so uh, hopefully this episode will get caught up. I want to get all three turns done and then um, we'll be real time. Because I normally play these games out for... Uh, like a fair number of turns and then I start recording once the games don't look like a flop because sometimes they fall apart earlier I get kicked out in the first 20 turns and I don't want to waste all the time recording uh, in a game where I get knocked out super early uh, So you can see I'm kind of I'm actually caught up in war and peace I've recorded that which is my oh, I'm sorry. No, that's another game I'm in that I'm not recording and I got raped in um, Sound and the Fury I'm caught up on, and then uh, Meeples is another game I'm playing. I haven't decided if I'm going to put that one up yet, um, but I might. I'm kind of just, I don't have enough time. Right now I'm just putting Lord of the Flies up and Sound and the Fury. War and Peace is like one of those games I got stomped out in like turn 20, and right now I'm just hanging around. Um, <clears throat> okay, anyway, turn 41. Uh, I promised you a fun turn this uh, this episode, or a few fun turns. So, uh, there's a Dire Portent. It looks like he has cast um, Eye of the Gods. And uh, we have, what? Okay, somebody claimed the Throne of Spring. Not sure who that is. We cast Voice of Aspie. We found a Wellspring of Secrets. I'm not actually sure what that is. We're going to have to check that out. But first, we'll come back to that. First, we're going to check out these battles. I believe this is the big battle. No, this is the raid. Okay, and there's nothing here. It seems that he's pulling all of his troops into that province that I am doing the Wind of Death party on, which couldn't make me happier. Okay. God, my Wraith Lord's so fast. What is his combat speed now? 84. That is so fast. It's ridiculous. Okay. Trotturn is the... Okay, this is a ping. What's going on here? Okay, that's a ping. And here we have our big battle, our Wind of Death Trap. So all my troops are gonna die, but the question is how many will I take? One thing that matters is um, what will go up first, anti-magic or Wind of Death? Okay, when, Manti Magic is not up yet. Wind of Death went off. Okay, so I got a lot of them before Anti Magic went up. Anti Magic was cast next, so it's. I think it's kind of RNG which one goes off. They have the same casting time. Okay. Ton of his guys got Wind of Death on the first round. And there's way more. Okay, I'm kind of going high speed. This is probably too fast for anybody to watch. I think I've got- I might have one more cast. Yeah, okay, we got one more cast, and I think I'm done. So I think she's gonna retreat now on her next turn. She's got 99 fatigue, which is perfect, which means we scripted it almost perfectly. This guy's fatigued out. He'll probably die. 66. He's recovering pretty quickly. Okay, it says he dies. And importantly, how many of these guys are dying? So if we look, we got a ton of guys fatigued up here, or decayed up. Okay, we got a lot of them, it looks like. Okay, so it says our Grand Lemur didn't die, which actually, yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is a, a fa the fact that game versions are different, but I'm not sure. Uh, we lost almost all our troops. Our Lich Queen we saw retreat off the battle. And in terms of his troops, we got a Galderman. Uh, so we didn't get these guys. And I think the reason is a lot of them retreated or they had... Um, they had regeneration. And uh, Decay may not kill you. If you're old, if you have a lot of... If you're a long-lived troop... And you have regeneration, you'll survive. If you're short-lived and you have regeneration, you'll still die. And if you're long-lived, 
and you don't have regeneration, then you'll also die. But these guys are both long-lived and have regeneration, so they are actually not terribly vulnerable to Wind of Death. The Volas are more vulnerable. We got three of them. We got almost all of his skin shifters again. Um, and then we got only one of the vans, which I found a bit surprising. I would have thought I would have gotten way more. So this was not as effective as I thought it would be. I don't think I'm going to do it again on an army of this size. I would need to do it on a bigger group. Um, and I probably would have to do it where I bait out anti-magic. You know, like I do a magic phase movement and stop it, because I don't think this was worth it. Um, it did soften it up, and it did get a lot of the meat out of their front line, so their front line will be a lot weaker in the coming battle. And I got some of their mage support out. You know, I, I got a fair amount. And then a lot of these guys, I think, retreated. So the ones that retreated, uh, some of them may have also died. So it's hard to say exactly how many people died, but uh, if we just sum up the gold damage here, it's 25 times 25, so this is 500 gold. This is... Uh, 150 gold so that's 650 and then we lost 300 here so that's 900 and then this is 200 so yeah we're a little over a thousand gold I don't think that's worth it but it's not horrible and the real thing is can we convert that into a decisive win next turn which hopefully we will for events uh, we've located the <coughs> Uh, the monster, so that's good. Uh, random event. Okay, we found uh, death gems in a sunken ship. That's quite nice. We found earth gems, and there's worship at the basalt statue, so not too much. The death gems are certainly most welcome, and you can see the orders I put in this turn. We are just bringing the everybody, right? I mean, look at the battlefield. It is just full of my units. Um, I'm putting everybody where I can in a skirmish formation, so they'll be less vulnerable to mage stuff. I'm also scripting them a lot better than I did at the beginning. I had them in lines and stuff. That was a really bad idea on fire closest. What I'm doing now is they get attack rear, right? And they're just going to run in and try to get to the mages. And I killed, while I didn't kill a ton of his mages, I killed a lot of his uh, frontline troops. So I'm hoping that I can basically run in, skip most of his front lines, and get to the mages. Um, I'm also bringing in Itimu who is going to just haul ass to the back. He's going to do a couple Horde of Skeletons casting. I don't want him to get too far ahead, and then he's going to run to the back and kill everybody. Um, here we are doing Foul Vapors, Wailing Winds, and then a bunch of Clouds of Death. Uh, here we are doing Power of the Spheres and Anti-Magic, which will help for some of the Astral stuff. Um, we're also, this is our Holy Four, so we're dropping uh, Power of the Shadelands, which will make us our Ghosts hit a lot harder. Uh, we have, we're bringing all of our consoles to be doing apostasy spamming, so hopefully we uh, can capture some of his units, if not at least kill them with apostasy. Uh, we're bringing a lot of our Death 4 guys to do Cloud of Death spam, and uh, we're bringing this guy too to basically do Cloud of Deaths also with a Power of the Spheres first. And we're bringing um, this guy who's going to be doing Stygian Reigns. So we're bringing everything. And you will get to see it this episode. Lucky you. So, here we go. I've got a bunch of guys here that he thinks I'm going to attack him. I'm not, because I have no mage support down there. Let's check diplomacy. Anything? Nope. So that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and go to the next turn. 42. And let's see if we can watch that battle. Okay, I also said there, I didn't mention it exactly right then, but there was also going to be a magic phase attack. So I'm bringing in one of my immortals to come in, and she's just going to summon Lamashtas. Which I'm hoping the Lamashtas will... Okay, he just dies. I'm hoping the Lamashtas will jump back here, and then they'll cast, like, Thunderstrike on them. Here they are. and hurt them, but it didn't really hurt enough. So we look at that one. Yeah, basically they just got wrecked. But she served her purpose. I'll show you it again one more time. 
I didn't mention it, but the whole purpose was getting uh, anti-magic up, which they did. Let's see who was casting anti-magic. Do 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 do. Well, maybe it hasn't come out yet. Has it come out? Yeah, it's come out. Where is it? Anti-magic. Okay, so this is the person you had scripted for anti-magic, and she has no gems left. So that will be the last time she casts anti-magic this turn. Rip. Uh, finally, uh, the, what you've been waiting for, the best fight of this series so far. Look at this. He's got a lot of mages, but we've worked, we've kind of worked his front line so he doesn't have much blocker stuff. His vans run in. He gets anti-magic up. Or I get anti-magic up, I'm sorry. And I get foul vapors up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn uh, colored tiles on because I will be spamming apostasy. You can see my flanking squad running in here. So that's a much better scripting than I had before where they would just cluster around whatever was there for the front line. And you can see the flankers are really going in deep. Right, so we're gonna get this one. We're gonna work on some of these. Yeah. Winds of Death is all up in here, so these guys are all gonna die to that. I don't have Rigor Mortis yet. Once I have Rigor Mortis, this will be even more horrendous to fight against. Pretty much the only thing you can do against something like this is big battlefield wipe stuff with like a super strong dude. Uh, but then again, there's counters to that. But like, Firestorm would be pretty good against this. And he's got one last dude right here. So this is it. I mean, we've had victories before where we beat an army. But this was a big wipe. I mean, we killed all of his mages. Um, and we lost hardly anything. We lost 170 chaff. We gained a van. We killed three of these guys, so that's 600 bucks. Four of these guys, so that's 200 bucks. So we're up to 800. We killed one of these, so we're at 850. Six of these guys, so we're at um, 850 plus six. That's... Oh man, math. We're at like 1500 now, a little less. Uh, Avenger, all these are like 300, so we're at 1800. Uh, then we kill a bunch of these guys, so that's about... Uh, we're close to 2,000, and then we kill a bunch of these guys, which will knock us into... Uh, like... Almost 3,000 gold worth of stuff we killed. Especially if one of these things retreated, and then plus his PD. Yeah, so that is gonna hurt. And I don't think... I think we've been hitting him hard enough here and he's been reinforcing. I don't think he has a ton of reinforcements. I mean, he has, obviously has these guys here sieging man, but I don't think he has much more. So what we're gonna do, uh, and we took this too. So uh, we're very close to getting our homelands back that we lost 20 something turns ago. And I had promised him that in time he would learn this was a bad decision taking this from me and uh, I'm hoping that he does. It ended up, while it was tactically easy, he had the tools to do it, he didn't have the tools to finish the job, or was unwilling to, and over time it was definitely far more costly for him, and he's now gonna lose the whole island, I think. Um, it looks like we finally found the Kraken, which we kill. We got gold and a dragon helmet. Okay. Okay, there was a battle in Abyssia. Okay, so they're trying to storm the fort here. And it looks like it's the same formula. It's some trolls. It's some blind fighters. It's a lot of crossbows. Uh, the crossbows are not going to hit the mages in the back, though. And that's really what he needs to get. Um, I was hoping there'd be some fire elementals coming out, but I don't see any. Instead, what we see is... Here, I'll slow it down a little bit so you can see some of the casting. 
is uh, a lot of falling fires, which is pretty good against skelly spam and against trolls. Um, this is a tomb oracle. This is kind of the mid late mid game thug these guys can get. I don't know what he's scripted with. This doesn't look like a very useful script because he's not. You can gear these guys up, and they're essentially super combatants with the right gear. Though this is not really super combatant bless. A lot of times you would want like reforming flesh or something if you were going to really u utilize these guys, but. Uh, or you can use them as a caster, but he doesn't really seem to be doing either. He's just standing there. Uh, and he actually may die. Oh yeah, looks like they got him, because that solar rays will just chew through uh, undead. And... Yeah. Okay, and then these guys are surrounded by smolder ghosts, who do a fair amount of damage. So it's unlikely he's going to survive. And then he's probably fatigued out. Well, where is he? Is he fatigued out? No, almost fatigued out. You get fatigued out fighting these guys because of the fire aura. Oh, and they got hit with Stellar Cascade. Nope. Just got out of it. He got hit with Stellar Cascades and for a minute I thought he would die, but no. So, um, this cost Abyssia a lot of his front line, but very few mages. While it was much more expensive in terms of mages, um, and frontline for Agartha. The only thing, though, is Agartha is big and can replenish his losses, whereas Abyssia is pinned into his capital. So this... He really needed uh, some fire elementals up front. Um, so that he wouldn't lose quite as much of his stuff. But uh, for whatever reason, he was unable to do that or did not do that. Okay, we have a battle in Lomark, too. So he's attacking me here. And I think this is where my Wraith Lord is. Yeah. So we'll see what Itimu has to say about this. I don't think he's going to be happy. So we got Horde of Skeletons. Oh, and then we're coming back to snipe the commander. Very nice. And then they retreat. And as they retreat, we go chop them up. Okay, it doesn't seem we chopped anybody up. But uh, in the battle anyway, we chopped people up. Because four of these guys died. The real battle. The one that happened on the server that you can't see. Anyway, we're getting real close to the current game version too. So I'm not sure I can no longer blame game version on the desync between... Um, the battles. But anyway. Okay, that was the Kraken. <clears throat> we finished building Palisades here. And we see that the wolf production here has ramped up to giant proportions. Suggesting that... He may actually come and attack me, which is not something I like to see. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to run up here. We're going to attack this with uh, some raiders, and we're going to attack this with our main army. I really don't want to split up my main army. I kind of want a death ball uh, until I get the island. Uh, there's not too many objectives. I think I'm going to use my Wraith Lord to raid and uh, try to basically death ball in to get... There's a fort right here, and I really want that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Um, we're continuing site searching. We also got this guy who's uh, Earth 2 Air 1, so that's pretty useful to have the Earth Air cross path. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. There's some kind of cool stuff you can summon, like you can get the gargoyles. Uh, you can also potentially get, I think, an enchantment you get. Um, Watchers, but you'd have to have I'd have to boost the air up, but you can get that with the cross path, which could be useful uh, And then finally you can do uh, rain of stones obviously and um, You can forge dancing shields and things like that. So pretty good uh, We're gonna put some troops in here in case he attacks me and I think we're gonna send a message to guard saying Hey, we put a fort up on our border. We'll be keeping a small garrison for defensive purposes uh, I let him know we had our first enemy, and that I threw everything I had at one of his four large armies and killed it. So, yeah. And then we have four fire gems going to Abyssia, and say, hey, please convert these into some fire elementals. Uh, kind of giving him a hint at what he needs to do. And then I, he also made a, a post in the game thread saying, hey, can I get some nature gems? Just to everyone. And so I said, sure, I'll send you some. Uh, I'm hoping he... I think he's probably going to cast Swarm with that, but I'm not sure. 
So that is it, and I think we're gonna go ahead and plow into next turn, which is my current turn, which I have not yet submitted. So uh, we continue to find magic sites. We found a, a smolder stone and a flesh eater isle. The flesh eater isle, uh, you can enter to summon ghouls, so it kind of sucks actually. And uh, we have some battles, so let's watch these. Uh, this is my big death army moving through here. Oh, and I should say this time Midgard staled this turn um, He was going to stale after Last turn and I saw it and I put in like a 12-hour turn extension and then I went to sleep and then I didn't check it again before uh, The turn posted so he ended up staling which is unfortunate and if you noticed it was timed uh immediately after having a major, major loss, which he would be unable to really recover from. Which was on the heels of several other fights which were very expensive for him. So I think he lost motivation to play. Um, and I spent a few turns kind of talking to him, and actually like this day, real time, he said that he would like a sub. So we will find one for him, though we are a bit disappointed because, yeah. But people have real lives, and real lives come before video games, so... It's unfortunate, though, because I feel like I will be unable to extract my revenge for him having messed with me the whole time. Instead, the revenge will be extracted upon the sub, and I generally like subs, and I don't like attacking them. Uh, but we'll be taking this island back, sub or no sub. So I've got a decision. I could move everybody on top of here. Which actually is probably the right move. If I'm deathballing, why the hell would I not do that? Okay, there's one reason I might not do that. The reason is... This turn I get enchantment... 6, which will give me rigor mortis. And he's got a ton of mages in there. And I'm gonna take a lot of attrition from these mages, but I'll probably take... at least a third less, maybe half less, if I get rigor mortis up. So, we're gonna be doing that. So I'm gonna just take this with the big army, this turn. And then next turn I'm gonna move here. But before next turn posts, because I don't want Midgard to stale again, because it won't be fair. Um, I need I need to find a sub. So uh, I, I'd love to ask you guys. I'm sure one of you would volunteer. But um, unfortunately, this game is not going to be real time with when you're watching it. So uh, anyway, there's a sub request on Steam, and hopefully we get a really good player to pick up Midgard, because um, he is fully defended against Kalem. He's defended without losing any territory to all of my rating against a very large border um, and has won lot, most of the large military conflicts. Uh, meanwhile, he's been attacked by Ryla and eventually negotiated a peace with Ryla. But he's done a phenomenal job holding up uh, to both me and Calum and Ryla and has been doing good diplomacy. Um, and I've gotten to a point where uh, he's going to have a very hard time keeping much of this. So, uh, he's definitely in in hot water. Uh, oh, excuse me. He's definitely in hot water, and I think he did make a really big mistake by attacking me early and then having nothing else he could do except pissing me off. So, he, he made bad decisions, but um, he was a really strong player, especially tactically. And he was good at doing diplomacy and stuff. So, uh, hopefully we get a good person to replace him. And, uh, yeah. And I hope that, uh, he is successful with his real-life stuff. And sorry, my phone is going crazy right now. I think my brother's sending out baby pictures. Uh, which I will have to check in a quick moment. So, yeah. So that's basically it. We're, we're gonna move here, and then turn after we're gonna move here. I think whatever sub we get... Um... Will probably pull their army here, expecting me to attack and like preparing some kind of defense. But I'll also open it up if the sub wants to go and take their troops and move them off the island. Uh, they can leave the island to me. But if he wants to defend, we can have a big battle, but he'll definitely lose it. There's no way, like no way he's going to win this battle. No way. I mean, that he can put up Wrathful Skies, which he should probably do. Um, but that's not going to save him. Not even close. He's going to get just totally wrecked. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to bring, be bringing in some more reinforcements. I do want to get this too, just because of the Earth income. It's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, we're going to be pat patrolling here if he takes this group and moves it out. 
actually need to go ahead and I think I'm gonna bring these guys in here too. I, I do want to reinforce that army some. Um, what would piss me off a little bit is if he attacks, which I don't think he'll do. Oh, there's one thing I didn't show you. Uh, in this fight, I managed to charm a Vanjarl. Finally, after all my apostasy spamming, I finally get a Vanjarl. And that's nice, because it's my only air too. And it's air blood. I can't really use the blood, since you don't really have population, which you need for... Um... I don't think the battle showed it, but... Um... But yeah. I can't really use blood because I don't have people in my empire. Uh, though potentially I could get enough to maybe make a bloodstone, but I don't think so. Not really. It would be too much. I'd have to empower one of my earth guys and then have... Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so I don't think I'll be using the blood, but the air's nice. I can do... Um, Cast Air Sight Searching. Auspects, I'll have to get that up to level 4. Which, I might actually consider that earlier in my little queue. Like, maybe this. Alteration 6 is another kind of big target for me. It will open up Darkness, which will be pretty good against a lot of people. Not great against the Gartha, but I feel like I'm already pretty strong against them. Uh, but it'll make me really good against Caleb. And then... Uh, what else? I think we'll run up construction next. Construction! Uh, there's things I would like, but you can't... It doesn't really synergize well with the mortals, because you're going to lose all the stuff you put on them. Uh, though it is nice having the, uh, the astral boosters, so these guys can teleport around a little better. Anyway. Uh, what we're going to be doing with this guy is we're going to be pulling him here, and then we're going to cloud trapeze him over here. At which point he can... Um, run around and cast a bunch of, I think, yeah, I think we're actually going to do auspexing rather than uh, having him run around in sight search. But anyway, that will be his lot in life now. Uh, and the big army is moving over here, and then they should have enough movement next turn to run up here if he doesn't take this from me. Um, I'm not going to have, well... Maybe I should put a force in here. I think this force is going to go here, actually. And we're going to just script them like this. We're going to give them three squads. Uh, this guy is going to be in a skirmish formation on fire closest. These guys are going to be positioned slightly back and on attack rear. And we're going to put this guy, like, right in here. And we're going to put him on spells. This could deal with, like, pox or something. I don't know what I'll send. But I don't think he's going to move a big army in. Because he probably doesn't want to fight this. Uh, so it's very unlikely I get attacked here. But it's very important. I'm going to move these guys just in case there's something really weird here. Because um, I need this province open so that next turn I can move on top of here. And I think next turn what's going to happen is he's going to move these guys in. Uh, and then he'll fight me inside or outside of the fort. I'm not sure. Uh, probably better to fight outside, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll take this and then run up here. That's basically the play. Uh, and there is a chance, because we're going to have a sub, that we end up do coming to peace terms where I just let him move his guys out. Because um, after I take this island from him, he's not going to be quite as big of a threat as he had been. But uh, let's say I take the, he doesn't want to agree to peace. I think I'm just going to take this island and not worry about getting much more up here. Like, maybe I'll take this just because it's high income. But after that, I'm probably going to focus down here, I think. Yeah. Also, I'm finally putting a palisade up here. Um, Calum attacked. I didn't watch all the battles. Uh, Caleb attacked... Oh. oh, this was another battle here. So... Yeah, we don't... We don't win this. My Wraith Lord gets surrounded and killed, so that's unfortunate. Um, here's Caleb. Caleb attacked with a pretty big force here. I had sent him the exact formation, like I, I screenshotted this and sent it to him. 
so that he would have a good chance at attacking. And watch this and see what he does wrong. It's going to be a little hard to tell, but you can you can probably see. So Thunderstrike's coming out against PD. These guys are on holding attack back here. And his guys are on holding attack. They're about to probably jump in. Okay, and there they go coming down. So let's let's look real quick. So he's casting Orb Lightning. His casters are way back here. They're a little bit out of range of like the meat and potatoes of his troops. They can only really hit this shit up in the front. I think Thunderstrike can probably hit back here. Thunderstrike is pretty long range, yeah. But it's really low accuracy when you shoot it from that far back, so you can see it's missing all over the place. So you probably want your guys a little closer to the front. The other thing you can see is, so he did a good job picking off some of the spellcasters. Um, but if you look at it, Kalem is an Alpha Strike nation, like you need to kill everybody in the first couple of turns. And these Banjaros, Kalem is very good against them because they can surround them and then they'll get the harassing penalty and their defense won't be good and then they can kill them. Um, that said, they can't do it um, when they're not attacking them. So right now, basically Kalem's getting flanked by these guys. So these guys are going to tear through the Kalem troops who kind of in and of themselves aren't very strong. Most of these guys aren't doing anything. They're all just circled around one group. So, uh, what one thing you can do is you can, and I, I end up sending him a message telling him this, but you can split your dudes up into smaller groups and have them attack, just don't give them any orders and they'll pick random squads and you'll get a much better split of guys throughout the field. The exception he should make is he should definitely make sure he's attacking the vans. So, he should have a good 40 of them that are just scripted to attack uh, Calvary and uh, that will probably do a good job. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, I have it on fast game speed, but he's basically getting hit really hard. Like, he's taking a lot of damage. Okay, let's watch this again. Sorry, I sped through the battle too fast. And this is a really long episode. So the Thunderstrike is not really doing much. The Vans are chewing through his dudes. The, see, these guys are just way better, right? Like, um, they're also body ethereal, which is, in this case is not going to help them. But I don't know how you get all these guys body ethereal. But um, yeah, I mean, they just chew through the birds, right? Just chew through them. So yeah, basically, he would have just he would needed to have killed the Vans by scripting to attack Calvary, and then if he had more random squads, it's more likely his guys would have gotten back there in the, with the mages, rather than just sitting clustered around not doing anything. Because he really wasted his uh, numbers, his numeric advantage that he did have. And I think I just pinged this. Yeah. Uh, okay, sites, we found a Smolder Sun Flesh Eater Isle, I already talked about that. Oh, uh, Abyssia uh, was going on holiday. And he only has a couple places left. Uh, a couple uh, provinces left, so he just found a friend to sub for him. And anyway. Uh, yeah, he basically is just being cute and saying, Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to try to win this. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's it for this turn. We are moving these dudes. Okay, we're still... This event thing hasn't gone away, and I haven't gotten my sunken ship. I don't know if this thing is what's queuing the event, because this is also technically a ship. But uh, normally there's a different uh, site that will spawn, and I, I haven't seen it yet, so hopefully it will pop up. And uh, yeah, so then I think it's going to be a question uh, in the next episode. Hopefully I'll cement my hold on this island, and then I'll have to figure out who I go after next. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure who that will be. We'll have to figure it out. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I have no idea how this game's gonna turn out, but I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun playing it. So see you guys next time.